Now, as we all know, the sun is fusing hydrogen atoms in its core into helium atoms. This fusion process causes the Earth, or causes the sun, to give off tremendous amounts of heat and light. About 59% of the radiation given off by the sun is heat. Now, by the time it reaches the Earth, it's gotten a lot cooler, but it's still pretty warm, which is why we're here. Now, at this distance from the sun, there are two planetary bodies. There's the Earth and us, and there's the moon. Now, the moon is a big floating rock in space, and unlike the Earth, it has no atmosphere. In other words, the moon gets all of the sun's heat. The daytime temperature on the moon every day, day after day, hour after hour, 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Now think about it. Why is there no water on the moon? <laughs> because it's 250 degrees. Water boils at 212 degrees. Now, rocky asteroids and icy comets smacked into the moon just like they smacked into the Earth, and they brought us all this water. So where's the water on the moon? There is none. It has no atmosphere. 250 degrees on the moon. All of the icy comets that landed on the moon, all that water boiled away. And because the moon is so small, it doesn't have a big gravity, so it can't hold an atmosphere in, in place. So the moon is dry, hot, and dead. Now the Earth, on the other hand, it has an atmosphere. And what does this atmosphere do? Well, these charts from NASA tell the story. These charts show the Earth's opacity to the radiant bands of energy given off by the sun. On the far left, you see the X-rays, the gamma rays, and the UV. On the far right, we see the radio waves, the ultra-long radio waves. Now, as you can see, the ultra-long radio waves, the X-rays, and the gamma rays are completely blocked out, 100%. The Earth's atmosphere absorbs those incoming radiation and shoots it back out into space, protecting us from that. 70% of the UV is also absorbed and shot back out into space, protecting us from skin cancers. But 30% of that UV gets in. So when you go out, wear a broad brim hat and don't forget a sunblock. Now at the far right side is the ultra long radio waves. These are completely absorbed by the atmosphere and blocked out. Now as you can see from the chart, only the radio waves get into the Earth's atmosphere and down to the Earth's surface without being blocked, the AM and FM bands. Now, to the other side, next to the infrared, is the rainbow. This is our visible spectrum. Now, the visible spectrum light pretty much all gets in. About 6% is blocked out by the Earth's atmosphere. To the right of the visible is the near-infrared, there's a couple of bands of infrared that come in in pretty big numbers, but most of the near-infrared radiation is blocked out. Likewise, at the other end, next to the radio waves, we see the microwaves and the far-infrared. 100% of the microwave radiation in far-infrared is blocked out. The only infrared radiation that makes it into the surface at any significant amount is the mid IR range, known popularly as the 10 micron range. So, what does this mean to greenhouse effect warming? How does it prove that man-made greenhouse warming by CO2 is impossible? Well, it's actually quite simple. 20% of the mid-IR range infrared light is blocked out now with our current levels of CO2 and other greenhouse gases in the air. If we increase the number of greenhouse gas molecules in our atmosphere, that means there's going to be more molecules to absorb the incoming 
heat radiation from the sun. I mean, remember, a greenhouse gas molecule or atom is one that absorbs infrared heat. Right now, there's so much infrared absorbing greenhouse gases in the atmosphere that 20% of the mid infrared range is blocked out. But if we put more and more and more and more CO2 into the atmosphere, that CO2 is going to absorb more of the mid range 10 micron heat. And that means more heat is going to be blocked out and sent back out into outer space. Now, if we block out more of the heat, then the Earth will only get cooler. And this is the one big lie that warmers tell people. The atmosphere's primary job is not to warm the Earth. It's to block out 135 degrees of heat from the sun so that the Earth surface does not get to 250 degrees and boil all the water off. Our atmosphere protects us from the sun's heat and other rays. It's not just the ultraviolet and the x-rays that it's protecting us from. It's protecting us from heat. More than 135 degrees of solar heat never makes it into the surface of our planet. The atmosphere blocks it out. It doesn't allow that heat in. It protects us and it keeps our Earth from reaching 250 degrees just like the moon, which has no water because of it. So, the basic reality is CO2 doesn't warm the Earth. There is a greenhouse effect. Radiant heat coming off the Earth, heading out to space, 20% of that heat is being captured by the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and being reflected back towards the Earth, just like it captures that 20% of IR mid-range coming in and sends it back out to Earth. And Earth radiates primarily, strongest, in the 10 micron range, because that's pretty much the only infrared heat that's coming in. So, with less IR heat coming in, the Earth's temperature will be lower. Now, what does the Stefan Boltzmann Law tells us? Well, remember, the Stefan Boltzmann Law tells us that the amount of heat that's going to be given off by the Earth is dependent upon the temperature of the Earth. If the temperature comes down because we block out more IR heat from the sun, then the temperature of the Earth also comes down. Now, the important thing to remember about the Stefan Boltzmann Law is it's not an arithmetic relationship. It's not a one-to-one -one relationship. It's a power of four relationship. Now, in science, you often hear people talking about squares. E equals mc squared. Every now and then you even hear cubes. You almost never hear the power of four talked about. But the Stefan Boltzmann Law is controlled by the power of four. Now, what this means is that if we take an object at, say, room temperature, 300 degrees Kelvin, and we take another object at 600 degrees Kelvin. Now, your logical mind is telling you, oh, well, twice as hot as room temperature, it's going to give off twice as much radiation, twice as much heat. No, not anywhere even close. Because this process, the re-emittance of heat by a body that warms, is controlled by the law of the power of four, meaning that 600 degree warm body is going to give off two to the fourth power radiation. It's twice as twice as warm, but two times two is four. Four times two is eight. Eight times two is sixteen. The change, the difference in the temperature between two bodies is raised to the fourth power by natural laws, which the Stefan Boltzmann Law tells us about. So, the 600 degree Kelvin body is going to be giving off 16 times more heat than a room temperature 300 degree Kelvin body. This is why the Earth doesn't suffer from a runaway greenhouse effect. It's impossible. The hotter the Earth gets, 
the more radiation it'll give off. And how much more? Whatever the increase in the Earth's temperature, you take that increase to the fourth power. Because there's no way for heat from the sun to get in through all the infrared absorbing greenhouse gases without being absorbed by the gases. More gases means more photons of heat are going to be absorbed coming in and sent back out. Fewer heat photons reaching the surface of the Earth means the Earth is cooler. And that little tiny bit of cooling will be magnified by the Stefan Boltzmann law to the fourth power and create a much larger drop in the emitted infrared heat which powers the greenhouse effect. And that means the greenhouse effect will fall by a huge amount for just a tiny bit of a drop in temperature. Right now I've given you some things that you're probably not really believing, especially if you're a liberal Democrat and you want to believe the Democratic Party never lies to you. But go online. You've heard it from me. Go online. Google the Stefan Boltzmann Law. Wikipedia has a very nice entry on it. Read over that. And go to YouTube.com. There are lots of videos by scientists, by physicists, about the Stefan Boltzmann Law. And they explain it with pictures and words and take you right through it. So don't believe anything I've told you. What temperature is the moon? Go to NASA's website. Type in the moon. Find out what NASA says the temperature of the moon is. Al Gore doesn't talk about the Stefan Boltzmann Law because Al Gore knows he's lying. He knows the Stefan Law proves that greenhouse gas warming is impossible. He doesn't talk about it, nor do any of the other warmers talk about the Stefan Boltzmann Law. But the Stefan Boltzmann Law is the science. It's the fact. It's the math. And science lives and dies by the math. All right? Now, we'll be doing some more episodes in which I will be debunking some of the most common lies that the warmers tell. So stick around and wait for the new videos. All right? You take good care of yourself. Bye-bye.